Welcome back to our series on atoms and in this section I'm going to mention something called ions but we're not going to get into detail yet because that's for subsequent chapters um, and then but we're really going to focus on interconverting between moles, atoms, particles, molecules, and mass. So just like the atoms can vary in numbers of neutrons, they can also vary in number of electrons. Okay, so an element we know has the same exact number of positively charged and negatively charged particles. So protons equal electrons in an element. But the way these react chemically is through their electrons and so by the gain or loss of electrons they become charged. Positively charged ions we call cations and negatively charged ions we call anions. So and we're going to get into this a lot more when we talk about ionic compounds and things like that but I just want to mention it because protons never change because if we do something totally crazy to it and change the number of protons, it's no longer that element because that's how we define what the element is. But neutrons and electrons, we can change the number or naturally occurringly they change numbers. So it's just important that we remember that protons never, ever, ever, ever change. You won't hear me say that very often. And neutrons and electrons can change in an element and if we if we uh, become positive we're a cation if we become negatively charged we're an anion and again I'm going to tell you all about that later okay so we're going to talk about the mole and mole is another one of those things like dimensional analysis is like a pivotal concept in chemistry and you've got to know this so what is a mole well a mole is defined by something called Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now you're going to see it written different ways with different numbers of decimal places. Typically we're going to use 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, and that's anything, pieces, moles, molecules, whatever, in one mole of something okay so that's how many of them there are and it's the same as the slide says is if you think about a dozen a dozen is 12 right a dozen is 12 so if you have 12 donuts that's a dozen donuts they mean the same thing if you have one mole of something then you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd parts of that thing and that's what causes it to be a mole. A tablespoon of water contains about a mole of water molecules. So in this spoon there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. That is a really hard number to visualize because it is so huge because 10 to the third is a thousand so I mean 10 to the 23rd is doesn't even have a number a name okay but it's just a huge number but it takes that many to have a mole of something so what the mole concept does and what Avogadro's number does is it takes us from the teeny tiny world of the AMU and brings us to the real world of grams and grams are things that we can actually measure in a laboratory in the real world we can't um, I don't know if you've seen Ant-Man, you know, Ant-Man can go into the atomic level and see the atoms and all that stuff. We can't do that, okay, if we're not Ant-Man. So we have to have some calculations and our buddies, the mathematicians, uh, specifically Avogadro, came up with this. And so we can now look at the information on the periodic table and use that in the real world as well as in the atomic world. Okay, so the value of a mole is equal to the number of atoms 
in exactly 12 grams of pure carbon 12. So we used carbon because you know that's mainly what we're made of. Um, and so we use that as a standard. So 12 grams of carbon exactly is one mole of carbon atoms, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. And everything else we compare to that. So we can use this, as you might have figured out already, because you know I'm all about conversions. Um, we can use this as a conversion factor, where one mole is the same as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or I can flip that and 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms is the same as one mole. So depending on what unit I need to get rid of, atoms or moles, okay, then I can use that as an equivalent, because remember if it's an equivalent, I can use it as a conversion factor. So let's, let's apply that. Calculate the number of copper atoms in 2.45 moles of copper. Okay, I don't have to worry about what number to start with because I only got one thing. So 2.45 moles of copper. Copper is Cu. You might have heard the term cupric. Okay, it comes from cupros, which was the old name for copper. And so in, in this one, I have 2.45 moles of copper. And I want to get to atoms of copper. Well, this is a pretty easy one because I know um, I've got to get rid of moles of copper. And I know one mole of anything is Avogadro's number. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. All right, so that cancels moles for me and it leaves me with atoms of copper which is what I want. Now make sure that you can put this in your calculator. I strongly suggest when you are doing the scientific notation numbers that you entered in your calculator by going 6.022 there should be a key on your calculator called EE push EE, -E. you might have to do second to get it, and then 23. That is calculator language for 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. If you do it times 10 and then capsule a 23, sometimes that'll add 10 times to it. So this is the best way. Some, I think Casio, they do like, they have a 10 to the X key instead of um, an EE -E key. But either way, you just do that key and then that way you won't have to worry about parentheses and all that good stuff okay so when you multiply 2.45 times 6.022 ee23 per mole you're going to get 1.48 times 10 to the 24th atoms of copper now please pause me <laughs> don't say that very often do i pause me and put this in your calculator right now, the one you're going to use on your test. If you haven't bought one yet, go buy one and look and see if it's got an EE key. Um, my, um, I like um, Texas Instrument. That's what I typically use. The, you can get a pretty cheap one, a 30, um, 30XI, I think, or something. Um, look at it and see if it's got an EE key, okay? Because that is going to help you. It's going to make your life so much simpler if you do your calculations like this in your calculator. All right, so make sure you do, you go ahead and try that. All right, so here is one where I'm, where you're going to go from atoms to moles. And so you're going to do it, use the same exact conversion. You're just going to have to flip that because you're going to have to get rid of atoms to go to moles. All right, and that's it for your first um, indoctrination into moles and atoms.